Japan is home to Marvel's engineering feats from shrines to skyscrapers along its bullet trains. However, not all of Japan's engineering marvels have been successful. Japan's $20 billion floating airport was supposed to be a modern marvel of engineering, a revolutionary new way to travel that would change the face of air transportation forever. But instead, this ambitious project has become a cautionary tale of what can happen when technology, environmental factors, and human error collide. In this video, we'll take you behind the scenes of Japan's ill-fated floating airport, uncovering the secrets and revealing the costly mistakes that have led to its catastrophic failure. Join us on a journey of exploration and discovery as we investigate the sinking of Japan's $20 billion floating airport and discover what lessons we can learn from this ambitious project gone wrong. Japan's Kansai International Airport, serving the Japanese city of Osaka, is located on two man-made islands in Osaka Bay. Kansai has fallen 38 feet since it first opened in 1994. To be honest, the airport is designed ready for possible sinking, but the problem is that it is sinking faster than what the engineers anticipated, leaving us to wonder how long the airport will last, and is its elevation enough to avoid flooding, and why is it constructed on a man-made island with a $20 billion price tag? Truthfully, $8 billion was the projected budget for the project. Due to the high price of maintenance, the original budget for the airport has ballooned to $20 billion. Since it would have been too expensive to construct the airport further inland, the Japanese Ministry of Transportation instead opted to construct it in Osaka Bay. Ministry officials decided against covering the cost of relocating and paying people who would have to leave their homes to make way for a new airport. The cost of relocating factories and offices would have been significant as well. Then, had they had the foresight to realize how much more expensive a sinking airport would be, they would have to deal with environmental concerns. Workers first had to construct an artificial island before they could begin work on the airport's original terminal and runway. Land reclamation in Japan gained enormous momentum after World War II. Thus, the idea of constructing land on top of the water wasn't exactly novel. The clay seafloor was covered with sand by construction workers first. The next step was to set up 2.2 million vertical pipes, each measuring 16 inches in diameter. After the pipes had been driven into the seafloor, they were packed with sand to absorb any remaining moisture. This was critical since the recovered ground is similar to a damp sponge. It would be impossible to build if the pipes couldn't take in water from the ground or the ocean floor. An airport terminal requires a solid, dry base to bear its weight. Crews were able to begin adding rock and soil to the sand layer after the pipes were removed, and the sand drain technique was put into place. The dirt and rocks came from neighboring mountains in order to fortify the sand layer and the underlying foundation an additional 180 million cubic meters of rock and dirt were brought in. The island's perimeter was protected by a seawall constructed from 48,000 concrete tetrapods. 69 huge steel chambers were used to construct the seawall's perimeter. The tetrapods were positioned inside of these chambers. The airport is safe against storm surges because the seawall spreads the force of the water away from the building. Without the seawall, Osaka Bay would flood the airport. The island's elevation was increased by dredging and filling until it was 60 feet above sea level, which in hindsight was a mistake since the engineers who designed the island failed to account how much the 511-hectare island would eventually sink. Nonetheless, construction on the terminal and runway began once the island was constructed. A three-kilometer bridge was built in 1990 to link the island to the growing city of Rinku. The airport city bridge in Osaka did not come cheap. Construction of it ran roughly a billion dollars. The airport was in serious debt after construction of the first terminal was completed and inaugurated in 1994. In the first few years of operation, annual interest payments on the initial terminal and runway were as high as $560 million. 
Renzo Piano, a renowned Italian architect, was commissioned to design the main terminal building at Kansai International Airport. Because of his fresh perspective, he was hired for the job, but his vision almost didn't happen. To cut costs, government authorities proposed making the terminal shorter than planned, but Piano demanded that it be built to the original specs. Even though the 1.7-kilometer terminal is the longest in the world, it could look very different right now due to Piano's last-minute changes. A second terminal and runway were built for expansion. This time, engineers were confident they had the issue under control, even though the first island was sinking significantly more than expected. The same method was used to construct a second island in 2003, but engineers took into account the fact that it, too, will eventually sink into the ocean. The government saw the need for the extension because the number of tourists visiting Japan was growing rapidly. The Ministry of Transportation in Japan sought to turn Kansai International Airport into a hub for Asian travel since Narita and Haneda airports in Tokyo were so congested. Customer defection to Hong Kong and South Korean airports was something they hoped to avoid at all costs. The question then becomes, why is the airport sinking to begin with? Although engineers knew the airport island would eventually sink, they significantly undercalculated how quickly and how far. Since it first opened, Kansai International Airport has dipped by 38 feet. Before the building began, engineers predicted a sinking of 19 to 25 feet for the first island. They gambled with the lowest possible estimate and paid the price. To minimize severe floods, engineers predicted that the islands would settle uniformly over the course of 50 years and stabilize at an elevation of 13 feet above sea level. Parts of the first island at Kansai Airport had plummeted to just 13 feet above sea level by year 2000, much sooner than engineers had predicted. After recalculating, engineers now believe the airport will drop a further 13 feet, falling to sea level in year 2056. To date, over $150 million has been invested towards shoring up and elevating the seawall surrounding the airport to avert this very scenario. The sinking of Kansai International Airport highlights the challenges of building infrastructure in seismically active regions and on artificial islands. Despite its high cost and engineering challenges, the airport has become an important transportation hub in Japan and has played a vital role in the economic development of the Kansai region. Through the implementation of various measures such as adding weight to the airport, ingesting cement, building a seawall, installing pumps, and conducting regular inspections, engineers continue to work to prevent further sinking and ensure the safety and functionality of this important transportation hub. Before we end this video, we would like to remind you to click the subscribe button below to stay updated on our future videos. Also, feel free to leave a comment or share your thoughts about Kansai International Airport and the challenges of building infrastructure on artificial islands. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.